Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1983 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Baltimore Orioles and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Orioles today is Mike Boddicker, whose record is 6-6 six six with a 4.39 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Brian Kelly, whose record is 5-2 with a 3.62 ERA. So El Presidente shut us out yesterday, five to nothing. This game was over in the second inning when uh, Sweet Lou committed an error um, that would have got us out of a jam and kept the game tied at zero. Uh, but he booted it, and that was it. Uh, the game. <laughs> I think we had two hits the whole ball game, um, and it was unfortunate because we had we got a good start. Um, out of uh, our pitcher yesterday, and uh, I really, I feel kind of bad because uh, Petrie pitched super well, and yet um, nothing to show for it. We uh, go to game three today, uh, the last game against any team in the American League East. It's the American League West for uh, the remainder of the season, and uh, we only have two more off days. If you take a look here into September. We only have two more off days, um, and that's almost when the season is over. So uh, whenever a player comes up tired, like Alan Trammell is listed as tired today, we're going to take them out and give them a, a day off. Also, I did make a roster move. I'll show you that here shortly. I want to just take one quick second, if you can give me a moment of uh, self-promotion here. Um, I want to thank uh, Freddie C. for buying a um, the 14 card. Uh, Brainiac Baseball uh, Orange Parallel Cards. Uh, these are the cards here. This is um, the uh, listing on Mercari where you can go and take a look. You'll see that uh, these cards that are designed by uh, Jeremy DeYoung. These are the Orange Parallel Cards uh, with uh, the pink, the purple um, uh, lining here and the, uh, the pink... Uh, border with the Brainiac Baseball logo up in the top. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, the Brock Ness Monster and the Creeper, Paul Gibson. Those are the specialized cards within the set. And then uh, you'll see those guys right there. A closer look. And then uh, the rest of the 14 card set uh, include Jack Morris, Burt Blylevin, Dave Rucker, Dave Rosma, Cappy, and Mickey Hatcher. And then the uh, final six are Lance Parrish, Sweet Lou, Alan Trammell, Ricky and Eddie, who are now no longer on the team, and uh, a new Kirk Gibson stylized card. So all the cards, uh, all of the cards are um, labeled and uh, have uh, Jeremy DeYoung's autograph on the back. So uh, I am selling this card uh, set for uh, $20. All proceeds go to Jeremy, none go to me. Um, and if you scroll down uh, to uh, maybe the midway, you'll see more cards from the seller. If you click on See All, you can see that um, each one of those cards are available uh, individually. And yes, I actually f forgot, but I sold a uh, Austin Riley rookie card yesterday. I got to remember to uh, take care of that. But I have a lot of cards for sale. If you're a follower of the... Um, uh, subscribe to the channel, follow this series. Um, if there's a card that you want that's not part of the uh, Jeremy DeYoung series, then um, let me know. Maybe we can make a deal. I'll be glad to um, cut people some breaks if I can. Okay? All right. Thanks for letting me uh, promote that really quickly. We'll move on to today's game. We have Brian Kelly on the mound. Apparently, he has never faced the Orioles. Highly unlikely. Roy Thomas is the only pitcher not available today. He got blowed up. For three runs, uh, two earned runs in yesterday's game. So he is not available. But we got uh, plenty of pitchers in the arsenal. Here is our lineup. And we did make one major change. Uh, we have sent down Eddie Miller. And we brought up from Double A, Jesse Barfield, who we just traded for from Toronto. You'll see he got a cup of coffee with them. 156 at-bats, batting 212. So... He had four home runs, and I believe, if I can remember correctly, 
I believe his first home run was off a of Tigers pitcher. So, um, but his his defense is what he's in there for. Why not switch it up? I mean, we're we're probably not going to win the division. So we have a uh, Jesse Barfield in left field with his stellar, R, I mean, a 95 rated arm. Uh, so Gibby will go to DH today. Gibby's going to play every day on the you know, as long as he doesn't get tired. Uh, even against left-handers. So, okay, let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Orioles. Looks like the same lineup as the first two days. Batting leadoff in left field is Alan Bannister. Batting second at second base is Wayne Krenchicki. Batting third at third base is John Castino. Batting cleanup playing first base is Jim Traber. Batting fifth and DHing is Greg Luzinski. Batting sixth at shortstop is Robin Yount. Batting seventh and catching is Ray Smith. Batting eighth in center field is Ron LaFleur. And batting ninth in right field is Kenny Singleton. Let's take a look at Brian Kelly. I think he had his best performance in a Tiger uniform. In his last start, we'll take a look here. He's got 12 games started, 5-2, and two, a 3.62 ERA, 50K in 79 and two-thirds innings pitched. Opponents are betting 235 against him. A 92-mile-an-hour fastball. Ground ball percentage is almost 50%. That changeup is rated at 96. That's the elite level. Uh, the 24-year-old right-hander doesn't go to arbitration until 1985. And if you look at his log, you'll see he went seven and a third innings against the Brew Crew, giving up only three hits. He did walk four, uh, but only one run in that ball game, uh, getting his fifth victory on the season. So uh, a very, very, very good start from him. Hopefully we'll get another one today. Let's take a look at the Tigers' defense. There you have it. We have Bass out there in center field and Terry Kennedy behind the plate. And welcome to uh, Jesse Barfield out there in left field. Okay, here is Alan Bannister leading off against Brian Kelly. Bannister hits a high fly ball into right center field. Glenn Wilson making the catch. One out. Next man up, Wayne Krinchicki. Droping it into left center field for a base hit. There's a little duck snort. Uh, I think I predicted at the end of yesterday that today's game would be a four-run victory by the Tigers based on our um, run differential. But we'll find out as Krinchicki's on first, perhaps looking to steal second base with John Castino up. A ground ball to third. Krinchicki forced at second. Two down as Castino's on first now for Jim Traber. Traber sitting on 20 home runs. Another ground ball to Brett. Play is made. So... We get through the top of the first, we head to the bottom half. Let's take a look at the Tigers lineup rundown. Batting leadoff. Playing second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker, who is numbers retired today. Very cool. Batting second at first base is George, uh, George, is Greg Brock. The Brockness monster. Batting third at third base is George Brett. Batting cleanup and catching is Terry Kennedy. Batting fifth in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting sixth and DHing is Kirk Gibson. Batting seventh in left field, making his Tiger debut, is Jesse Barfield. Batting eighth in center field is Kevin Bass. And batting ninth at shortstop is Doug Baker. Mike Boddicker on the mound, making his career high 18th start of the season. Six and six. 439 ERA, 80 strikeouts in 121 innings pitched. Doesn't walk very many, so he's got very good control. Uh, opponent's batting average is 285. He's got four complete games, including a shutout. His fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Uh, his ground ball percentage, 48%. He's got four pitches in his arsenal, only two that are any good. Uh, the slow curve and the changeup. Yes, we know he's got a Fosh ball. Overall, rated an 87, the 25-year-old righty goes to arbitration next year. And we know we faced him a couple of times. He took a loss back on July 27th. 
giving up two runs in seven innings. So a good performance. On uh, the 4th of July, he, he lost, giving up six runs in six and two-thirds. A no decision on June 29th. Going eight and two-thirds, giving up four runs. So oh, he's got a um, two losses and a no decision against the Tigers. So a pitcher we've had some good luck against. Here is uh, the defense for the Orioles. And uh, the same as the first two games. So you know they have liabilities out there in left and right. Okay, here's Sweet Lou. Leading off. Number retired today. Out there on the wall. It's right about, uh, well, it's kind of hard to see there with that banner. But it's right over there next to Alan Trammell. Threw out the first pitch to Trammell. It's pretty cool. Greg Brock grounds out to third, so the first two batters hit ground outs. And then George Brett gets a base hit up the middle. You can always count on Brett. As he's standing on first base for Terry Kennedy. You see here, I loaded the top with lefties. I don't know if it's going to make a difference today. As Terry Kennedy, that he cleaned up for the first time this season, grounds out to short. We go to the top of the second inning. No score. The Bull. Greg Luzinski. Leading off. A comebacker to Kelly. One down. Here's Hall of Famer Robin Yount. Batting 289. 17 homers. Lines it into right. That's going to get all the way to the wall for a double. You don't see too many get past Wilson out there in right field. That's only the 15th double for Yount this year. He is in scoring position for Ray Ray Smith. Um, yeah, there's one out. So we're going to pull the outfield in for Ray Smith. Doesn't have a ton of power. Five home runs this year. Flipping it down the right field line. Yeah, it'll score Yount. And a double for Smith. That is his 21st double of the year. One nothing Baltimore. Maybe I'm going to be off on that four-run differential. Well, we got to pull the outfield in again. This time for Ron LaFleur. And Kelly walks LaFleur. So now we got to play regular depth for a double play. That'll be tough with LaFleur on first. But Singleton has no speed at all. The worst speed in the sim at 55 rating. A fly ball to right. Will Smith tag and go to third? <laughs> of course. Of course the catcher tags and goes to third. Two down. First and third. Alan Bannister up. Will LaFleur be going? No, come backer to Kelly. And he fields it cleanly. So the Orioles get on the board. one nothing on the back-to-back -back doubles. We go to the bottom of the second. Wilson, Gibson, and Barfield are due up. Here's Glenn Wilson. Now the team leader in RBI. Uh, as you may have noticed, Hatcher not playing today. We might try to give him a couple of days off. See if he can't get right. A ground out from Gibson. So two quick outs. And here's Jesse Barfield. First plate appearance as a Tiger. And he hits a pop-up to third, where Castino drifts back and makes the catch. So we go to the top of the third inning. Brian Kelly at 36 pitches. Wayne Krichicki leading off. Well, Krichicki hits a high fly ball to center field. Pretty deep, 391 feet. There's one down. That will bring up. John Castino. And Castino gets a base hit back through the box. Fourth hit to go with a walk against Kelly today. So Kelly's kind of playing with fire as um, the sluggers are coming up here, starting with Jim Traber. Striking him out. There's the first K for Kelly. Two outs. And Greg Luzinski next up in the box with a ground ball to Trammell. And Trammell tosses him out at first. So we go to the bottom of the third inning. Kevin Bass will lead off. 
fast, betting 250 versus right-handers. It's a frozen rope to the left. There's one down. Tigers can't get anything going today. Next man up is Dougie Baker. Baker, line drive right at Singleton. And we're back to the top of the lineup with Lou. Lou's 0 for 5 in his career versus Boddicker. And he pops it up. So Tigers have nothing going on today. I mean, if there had been something shifty about that run, I would say the game is already over. But um, it was just back-to-back -back doubles. It's kind of what I would prefer to happen. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Robin Yout leading off against Brian Kelly. Striking out. Okay, Kelly getting into a groove here. Out number one. Ray Smith walks. Okay, he's back out of the groove. Will Smith be running? I would not be surprised. On the floor. Line to left. Waiting for Smith to tag, but he doesn't. Two down. Oh, he gets picked off. Ray Smith maybe was thinking about going there. Got caught leaning as Kelly picks him off first base. All right, well, now I feel like uh, the momentum might have shifted. We'll find out. We got three heavy hitters due up, starting with Greg Brock. He's still batting 330 versus right-handers. Ah, uh, ground ball to second, so... All right, well, we have completely stopped hitting altogether. We had two hits yesterday, and in our 7-1 to one victory, I don't think we even had eight hits, right? I think, it was, I think it was eight hits. Yeah. Well, shit. I mean, we've known for a while now that our season is toast. Um, as Kenny Singleton gets a base hit into center. Leadoff man is on. The worst hitter in the game can scratch a base hit off a guy that's rated, what, 92. But we can only get one hit against Mike Boddicker. All right, runner on first. You know he's not stealing. Might be a hit and run, though. A line drive to center. Bass makes a catch. Bass had one of the three costly errors by the Tigers yesterday. But overall, playing pretty decent center field. Krachicki hits it right back to Kelly, who turns a double play. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Nothing going on here. Yesterday's game was so boring that I talked about the movie Camp Ivy Love and how it was filmed here in Tucson. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. I mean, Tigers can't even make fucking contact. Barfield. Flies out to right. Um, I don't know what else to talk about today. As it <laughs> just you know rips it down the left field line. It's only a base hit. Brian Kelly had 78 pitches. I would feel okay about taking him out here. Um, but I guess if we can get past Traber, then uh, he might have smooth sailing. Got to get Traber first. A lot of ground balls back to the pitcher. Happens every inning, apparently, in real life. Castino advances to second. Here is Greg Luzinski. Base hit will score a run. Uh, we got to play, the, well, no, we can't play the outfield in against Greg. That's just stupid. I mean, that would be the right thing to do in game strategy, but not. it would never happen. But yeah, that, you would have to rely on that as Brian Kelly gets his third K. Um, and now with two down and a runner on second, that run would score on a base hit no matter what, in theory. Why is it every fucking time that Brian Kelly gets a strikeout, he gives up a walk? It's like the game will not allow him to have a, a better walk to uh, strikeout ratio. Like It's immediate. It's the next batter that, that it occurs to. Yeah, it makes no sense. Or actually, it makes perfect sense at this point, right? And he strikes out Ray Smith. So, it's one nothing Baltimore. Tigers have had three hits in the last 15 innings. 
Boddicker uh, you know, has great control. He has not walked anybody. That might fall in. Baker dumps it into left center. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Never mind. So the game is was over in the second inning. That is the crazy thing about that. There was actually no telltale sign. Um, but we're seeing it now with like a, what normally would have been a duck snort single is being caught. Um, so yeah, whatever, you know, I guess it's going to the secondary built in, um, you know, issues with the game. It's not, they're not going to the, the pass ball, wild pitch, balk, walk the bases low to hit a grand slam game theory that. Uh, it's pretty common. Hey, this is going to be another double for Bannister. That's his 24th double. He had two yesterday. And we've got a left-hander up. Uh, I'm going to let Brian Kelly pitch here. I, this is, you know, committing suicide here. But we may as well let him pitch to him. Yeah. So that'll be it for him. We tried to give him a chance to maybe get a victory, but there it was... It wasn't going to happen. All right. Well, oh, shit. We may as well let him pitch to uh, Castino. He's a righty. Then we can bring in Luby. 2 nothing. Yeah, let's just push buttons and get out this over with. All right, we're going to take uh, Kelly out and we're going to bring in we'll bring in uh, well actually we're bringing Rucker only ba only because of the uh, innings pitched you know like I mean it's kind of dumb to bring him in a game but he's not going to really make a difference but he's he's the best loogie we got alright now we'll bring in Tom Filer and we'll waste the rest of the game on him All right, we go to the bottom of the eighth. Bannister's only at 73 pitches. Ninth inning. Well, I have to say, at least the game fooled me this time. Like, uh, usually it's so obvious. Uh, but this time, I, I didn't see it coming. But just like yesterday, the game was over in the second inning. Down to the final out. All right, one swing of the bat from Brock. Should we try to build the drama? No. Ha! Infield single. Are they going to give us a? Are they going to give us a run here? Nope. All right. So we're shut out for consecutive ball games. Um, yeah. Now we are... Oh, there's the National League. Um, Montreal, two and a half back. Wow, they've lost five in a row. I know exactly what that feels like. Let's take a look at the American League. Yep, we're back to five games now. This season is toast. Um, and Baltimore... So we're only three and a half up on Baltimore now. Seattle, half game up. Look at the top of the um, the West. Look at the White Sox just jump over Minnesota. Nah, at least they're making it interesting, that division. That's what the White Sox did last year down the stretch. They um, made a run for it, finished in second place. They, they weren't going to catch um, Seattle, but Chicago spent a, um, a major portion of the season in last place. Let's take a look at headline news. Yep. And transactions. Nope. And let's get out of here.
Thanks for watching, guys. Season's almost over. As I mentioned before, we will play an 84 season. I have decided that. Um, and I'll, you know, we'll probably start it when the baseball season starts. I'll take the whole winter off. Um, next year, uh, it will be the last year of the sim and most likely the last year that I use, um, this shitty, shitty fucking game. Um, Brian Kelly takes the loss despite having a great performance. Uh, 11, I mean, 11 batters reach base, so that's not great. Um, Mike Boddicker, complete game shutout. Um, yeah. God, the game was over in the second inning. That's unbelievable. Um, uh, for the second game in a row. All right. We're going to come back tomorrow and start a whole new series. Uh, I guess starting against the American League West. I think it was Kansas City, right? So that'll be fun. All right. Until then, everyone, have a great night.